It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, our chief investment officer, my father, Bob Payne. Well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about it's not your parents' retirement. If you've already arrived or getting close to the age when your parents retired, Bob and I are going to discuss how different your retirement's going to look than your mother and father's did many years ago. We're going to talk about worlds of investment. We're going to break down the major options of where you can place your money and invest it for retirement, or if you're in retirement now, and give you some of the pros and cons of all the different options available to you. Along with this week's financial pornography, there's a lot of stuff out there in the media, the news, you need to avoid at all costs to keep on track with your game plan for retirement. And we have our spotlight segment today. We have our colleague, certified financial planner, Michelle McKinnon on the show. She's going to talk about a real retirement case she worked on, give you some tips, give you some ideas on how to solidify your retirement. So good stuff this morning. Let's talk about the way retirement used to be versus today, Bob. And I'm curious, when my grandfather, your father, Pop Pop, retired back, oh man, I guess it was what, over 25 years ago or 30 years ago, what did Pop Pop's retirement look like back in the day? You know, right, so much different today than it was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, pretty much retirement was covered for you, right? Today, you need to plan for yourself. Now, what percentage do you think 30 years ago, Pop Pop's retirement was covered by Social Security and pension? I would say that pretty much covered his whole lifestyle, but did he even have a pension? Well, he didn't have a pension, but most people did. You know, that's one thing that uh, we didn't have a lot of today. But, you know, 30 years ago, most retirees had a pension if they worked for a major corporation. Yeah, those days are long gone because the advent of the 401k really put the onus of retirement on the individual. So a lot of times nowadays, you don't have the luxury of not only getting Social Security, but a pension on top of that. I'll tell you the other thing you had uh, back in the 80s for the people who retired then is their medical costs are mostly covered by their former employer. Oh, yeah. And medical costs, as we know, are probably one of the biggest expenses you're going to have in retirement. I can't even imagine, you know, having the luxury of a company taking care of, uh, you know, my medical costs in retirement. That's just, you know, just non-existent today when we look at building a plan for you. Yeah. You combine that with uh, the fact that medical costs will go up two to three times inflation. You know, it's almost like educating your children and keeping your parents healthy is uh, there's not enough money in the world. Yeah. And that's why a lot of times this generation is be called the sandwich generation because you just have so many more financial burdens than your previous generations did. And I, I mean, it's really one of these things where your plan has to be so much more dynamic today than plans, Bob, you and I were running, you know, close to 20 years ago. It's just a completely different world. Well, that's why you got to be so careful, Rod. You got to be certain that you're putting together a retirement plan, not based on what your parents did. It can be very deceiving. How many times did I tell you, Pop Pop would be on the golf course and I'd get a call from the back office that his checks were bouncing. <laughs> and I'd call him up in the middle of the round and I'd say, Pop Pop, you know, hey, Pop. Yeah, I said, we got a problem. We got, you know, your checks are bouncing. He'd say, yeah, okay, fine. Put some money in the account. Click. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, that's not really, I mean, I took care of them, but- Is this what uh, I have to look forward to, Dad, in your old age? (laughs) That's what I'm going to do, Rob. I'm going to play golf every day and bounce checks and, you know, it just puts you as the power of attorney. (laughs) Not all of us have a luxury to have a son who's going to take care of our expenses, as your father did. And I think that's why it's so important when you actually do run retirement projections, you're adding in a lot of things that didn't have to be added in 20, 30 years ago. Like you just mentioned, Bob, you have to have those healthcare expenses built into your financial plan. You have to have whatever expenses you have for your kids, your grown children, and any aging parents you know, built into the plan as well. And also just longevity in general, right? We're living a lot longer than our parents and grandparents' generations lived. So longevity is another thing you got to plan for that you didn't have to plan for before. Oh, yeah. Longevity is like a spot on, right? When you were 65 back in 1985, you're expected to live another 14 years. So you're going to live to 79. That's amazing. That same person today is going to live to 91. 
And then, yeah. you know, take your mom. You know, uh, women back in 1985, if they were 65, were expected to live to 84. Now it's 94. Your mom's expected to live to 94. That's a lot of planning. That is a lot of planning. And if you think about it, I mean, when you're planning for 30 years plus in retirement, you need to have the appropriate amount of growth in your portfolio, the appropriate amount of income, because you're really planning for the long term. And it's like, you know, we've said a lot on the show, Bob, but retirement is not really a destination anymore. It's a whole nother journey and you've got to be prepared for it financially. Yeah, you do. You have to have productive assets, right? I mean, a lot of times we want to have big houses and baby boomers, like we love houses, right? We love big houses. And, you know, a lot of times baby boomers come in and they have so much money in real estate, which suck assets out of your portfolio. They're not money generators, you know, they're, they, they suck money out of your portfolio. So they're expensive. You want to have income generating assets to fill that income gap, not just for today, but what might be 20, 30 years from now, because a lot of you are going to live 20, 30 years longer. Yeah. And I had this conversation the other day with a, with a baby boomer client. He's 65. He wants to work another five, 10 years. And the numbers just don't work with the behemoth of a house that he has, you know, out in uh, in Long Island, where the real estate taxes are exorbitant, the maintenance on the house every year is is also dramatic. So we figured, okay, if you sell that big asset, make it a productive asset, and you cut that overhead that comes with owning a home, it's a game changer. So these are all the things you have to start thinking about. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need a game plan for the long term. I know it's not my parents' retirement. I need to get serious. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next ten callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our famous Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review that's going to help you get through retirement. Just simply bring in all of your statements, put them in a brown paper bag. We'll sort through everything for you. If you bring in last year's tax return, we'll have our CPA partner review it. We'll make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. If you bring in that will that was done 20 years ago, We'll have our estate planner review that to make sure your estate plan's up to date. Then we'll take all of your financial statements, look at all your investments, build you a personalized portal, and do a full x-ray of everything you own. We're going to look at all the critical elements. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you're not dependent on market volatility. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden fees in financial products. I know it's shocking. We're going to break down all those hidden fees and things like insurance products, brokerage products, mutual funds, show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What risks, what pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? Are you prepared for the next market crash? We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio. And then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine the most important question. Is your money going to outlive you? Or more importantly, are you going to outlive your money? Utilizing strategies our family has worked on for four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, planning is hard. Calling us is easy. Give us a call at 844-752-6692. You can text or call 844 752 6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over 200,000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, co-founder and chief investment officer of Payne Capital Management. Now, this week on the Street of Dreams, the good news and the good times continue to roll with the Commerce Department's announcement of an upward revision of the second quarter GDP to an annual rate of 4.2% from an earlier estimate of 4.1%. In addition, U.S. corporate profits measured a 16.1% gain year over year. Now, this is the largest in six years. Of course, it was boosted by the tax cuts and a stronger economic growth than initially reported. Now, small company stocks made all-time record highs this week and are outperforming their larger company counterparts with earnings growth of 35% 
from last year. And with the Small Business Optimism Index climbing to its second highest reading in its 45 year history, as business owners expect the strong economy to continue. Joining the Russell 2000, that's the Small Company Stock Index on the new high list where the S&P 500, the Russell 1000, the Russell 3000, and the Wilshire 5000 indices. The New York Stock Exchange advanced the Klein line, the NASDAQ, and the value line geometric and arithmetic indices. Now, this all sounds good, especially when you hear it on the evening news that the market is making an all-time record high. But when you look at your statement, you might be a little confused since the previous highs were made this past January when the market made a short-term peak and the majority of the gains were made for the year. See, the market is just getting back to even, coming out of a seven-month consolidation from this past January. But historically, when the stock market makes new highs after a period of consolidation, it's proved to be very bullish. Of course, bull markets climb a wall of worry, and the media has plenty of issues they want you to focus on. But see, markets don't care about good or bad. They only care about better or worse. And things continue to get better as a whole with the second longest economic expansion in the history of our country. If you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to my family's needs, to my goals, to my risk tolerance? Why sit there and wonder when you can know? For a free analysis, please call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692. For all the latest information and news that you need to retire successfully, make sure you go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I are very simple men. And of course, we want to keep it simple for you so that you can have the most common sense advice when it comes to your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's a simple three-part series. You can simply download it for free. Text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. It gives you a quick baseline on all the things you need to do to get retirement ready. It's an easy way to get started. You can get the course for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. Text the word bullish to 555-888. And in this segment on No Pain, No Gain, we want to talk about the different options you really have when it comes to building a retirement plan what different investment options are available to you, or if you're in retirement now, and what are some of the pros and cons to the different worlds of money that are available to you? Bob, and when we talk about the pros and cons of the world of money, I think the first place I think about is cash, the banking world. How much cash are we sitting on right now? And you know, what are some of the advantages to having money, a lot of money sitting in the bank and some of the disadvantages? Well, the big disadvantage is, is that cash is only insured up to 250000 per depositor, right? A lot of times you own a business where back in 2008, 2009, the friendly bank pulled your line of credit and you were stuck. Right. You're just hanging out there to dry. So a lot of businesses now keep enormous amounts of money in cash and it's not insured. That's right. And we see this too as an individual investor, especially since 2008. You may have gotten burned, put your money out of the market or started stockpiling cash and been nervous to figure out what to do with it. And the real shame of it is, Bob, and this is why banks can be somewhat evil, is they're paying nothing in terms of interest on your savings and checking accounts, and interest rates have gone up. What's up with that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mortgage rates have gone up. A lot of credit's gone up. Margin rates have gone up. And you're telling me the banks have increased their savings rates? I'm shocked. I know it's cruel, but if you're still sitting in cash, you haven't seen the interest rate in your cash go up the same way if you're borrowing from a bank have gone up, that's just unfair in my opinion. Well, I just, you know, the other day I sat down with a client, Ryan. We took a million eight out of uh, one of the biggest banks in the country. And he said, Bob, you know, it's a great bank. It can't go under. And I said, yeah, I said the same thing about Merrill Lynch right before it went under. You know, never say never. If you have $250,000 in insurance per deposit, well, move it to five banks, move it to 10 banks. And we can do that on a push of a button, which is really nice. 
Yeah, you could just ladder out CDs right now. You can get a much better yield than sitting in cash. The other thing to think about is if you're just sitting in cash and you need that money working for retirement, let's face it, cost of living has averaged over 3% since World War II. That means every million dollars you have today is worth a half a million dollars every 20 years. So Bob, if you're sitting in cash right now earning that measly interest, that's having a really, really negative effect on your retirement. It truly is, right? And it's you know, you need a strategy. You can't just have an all or none proposition. That's the thing. When you look at the worlds of money, you've got the banking world, you have the insurance world, and you have the world of Wall Street. And, you know, they all have certain business models. But, you know, you wouldn't have someone just build a boat for you. For example, you wouldn't have a, you know, if you have a bank build a boat or an insurance company build a boat or Wall Street build a boat, you don't want a boat that has a sail too big or an anchor too small or an engine too big, right? You right. need balance. And if you just go to one institution, you're not going to have balance. Yeah, because you do need cash on hand. You need liquidity. You can't have everything invested for the long term. I mean, one of the keys to our strategy is having what we call diversified streams of income. You know, mm -hmm. ideally, you get to a point in retirement where the cash flow coming in exceeds what your income gap is, and that's the money that you're not making anymore working, and you're not touching principal. And that's kind of the key there, but you always need some sort of liquidity because there are emergencies. And sometimes it's not the best time to take your money out of the market. And that's why you want to have diversification in your portfolio. Well, that's why I love when I see these institutions advertise and they tell you they can be all things to everybody. But let's face it. In the banking world, they want to lend you money. In the insurance world, they want to sell you insurance. In the Wall Street world, they want to fee you to death. When you're working with an institution, you want to make sure it's your objective that's being served, not theirs. Yes. And that's one another key thing is with the Wall Street world specifically, you really want to understand, is the advisor you're working with, are they an old school, what we call broker? Even if they have a shingle out there saying they're a financial planner, are they a real financial professional where they take on a fiduciary responsibility? It's a key difference. And the real difference is if you're a fiduciary, like we are, is you by law have to act in the client's best interest and you're not allowed to just sell products that may benefit the broker and the firm. And that's a very key distinction, Bob. Well, it's a big distinction, right? Fiduciary works for the individual, works for you. The stockbroker or insurance agent or whoever is a registered representative. Now, they're not a registered representative of you. They're a registered representative of the company that pays their paycheck. Who are you going to be loyal to if you're a registered representative? The client or the institution that writes you a check every month? Yeah, it's kind of like the old analogy of when you go to the doctor's office and the doctor's recommending the pharmaceuticals of that pharmaceutical rep that took him on the best trip last year. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing a lot is going on in the financial services world. So you need to be aware and make sure those conflicts don't exist because they can. Which also makes me think about, Bob, you know, we hear a lot about annuities. Annuities are sold all the time. They're on the radio. What is it? Crash-proof retirement. But there's a lot of cons to owning a lot of these annuities that give you, quote unquote, guaranteed income for life, which I put that in big quotes. Well, well, it is a big quote because they give you the impression you're going to get S&P stock market returns with no downside risk. And you're going to get the same upside of somebody speculating or investing you know, in a basket of S&P 500 stocks, which is impossible. You can't have above average return with absolutely no risk and no fees. You know, ever wonder why, Rye, when somebody calls an insurance company and says, you know, I took out this annuity and I'd like to get my money out and they suddenly tell them they got a 10% penalty, but there's no fees? I suspect, Bob, because there's definitely hidden fees there you don't know about. And that's the thing with annuities is, a lot of times you will get a stream of income, but you, what you need to realize, and this is really, really important, is you probably have to give something up. And it's usually your principal in exchange for an income stream for life. And not to say it's good or bad, but what you have to think about when we think about when we're building plans for you is liquidity in retirement or having access to your money is really critical. And it can be very dangerous and risky to give up principal. So you really need to understand the fine print with any sort of insurance product that you're going to go into. You know, Rye, isn't it amazing every time we call an insurance company and ask them for a track record of their annuities and they tell us they can't provide it? <laughs> it is, uh, it's not shocking to me, Bob, because there might be a lot of smoke and mirrors involved there. Just saying. Well, if you want to make sure that uh, you don't have a portfolio that's built in smoke and mirrors, then want to have a little more certainty in, in your life. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will do a complete analysis 
of your personal financial situation. Matter of fact, we'll create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. And if you're one of the next 10 callers, here's exactly what we'll do for you. We'll review your tax situation. We'll have our estate attorney review your wills, trust. Basically, be certain that your estate plan is not an IOU to the Internal Revenue Service. But lastly, we're going to look at all of your investment statements, regardless of where they're custodied, whether it's with an insurance company, a bank, a brokerage firm, or another RIA. What we want you to do is take all those statements as they come in, get a shopping bag, throw them in, and make an appointment. We'll do all the work. What we want you to do is be able to compare apples to apples to see if your portfolio has the three key elements of a successful strategy. That's diversification, fees, and income. You know, not all portfolios are diversified. Most of you are taking more risk than necessary to achieve your financial goals. Why take more risk when you don't need to? A lot of portfolios are overcharging you. We want to be certain that you are not paying any more fees than necessary. Yes, as Ryan says, there's a lot of hidden costs in those portfolios. Let's pull back the curtain and make sure you're getting what you're paying for. And lastly, you know, as we retire or if you're in retirement, you know, there's two goals in retirement. to get retired and to stay retired. And in most cases, there's a gap in income that has to be filled. We want to be certain that you have the cash flow to support the lifestyle and to achieve the dreams and goals that you and your family have set out for. And lastly, we want to tie it all together and be certain that you have a portfolio where you're going to outlive your money. That your money's not going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my son and I have been perfecting now for over four decades. For 43 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with the highest odds of success and as much certainty as a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text us now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, get the holistic review at 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Get a second opinion. Know what's going on in your portfolio. Get a game plan in place. Simply text or call 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, take advantage now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob... What awful, profane advice did you find online this week that we all need to avoid? Well, Rob, I was reading a couple of articles, and, and there's one that reminded me of one of the most important investment lessons uh, that I a- ever taught you when you were growing up. And that was never lend money to your friends, your father-in-law, or your brother-in-law. Remember why I taught you that? Um, well, mainly because you wouldn't get it back. <laughs> Yes. Not only would you not get the interest, but you wouldn't get it back. So this article reminded me to add one more thing, and that is never lend money to cities in the state of Illinois where their pensions are in distress and where the local governments have overspent and overpromised, you know, their employees. That sounds like a very dire situation, Bob. Um, So what's what's the latest? What's going on there right now that um, you you don't want to own Illinois' bonds in your portfolio, especially on the municipal side? Well, what you have is a situation in a town called Harvey, which is outside of Chicago. They've got 60 million in unfunded pension liabilities, which is twice their operating revenues. And what they've decided to do is basically default on the municipal bonds. So basically the people that lent money to Harvey are no longer getting their interest and there's a good chance they're never going to get their money back. Well, it's a really good point because you know we always say this, but all bonds aren't created equal. 
Um, and if you look at state by state, if you own a tax-free bond portfolio, it's really important to know what credits you own or at least have someone doing research on them. Um, and this is where you get a lot of risk. We talk a lot about bond funds on our show, but owning bonds outright or owning bond funds where you don't really understand what you own or no one's actually watching the credit quality, you know, something like this where you think you're getting into a tax-free investment that's safe can come back and, and bite you in the you-know-what. Yeah, it's not just the bond funds, right? Because you don't know what's in there. You really don't. I mean, it's you get a prospectus, but you know, most most stockbrokers and, and most investors that are sold these products don't really understand, um, you know, what the bonds holdings are. There's no real transparency. But the other thing that I've seen over my 40 years is in every town, uh, in every city, you know, people think that their local general obligation, you know, a bond that's issued by the city they happen to live in or the town of Harvey or Harrisburg, PA, for example, they think they're safe, but they're not. They don't have the revenue. They don't have the resources. And a lot of times when they go up against the state, they lose. So, you know, we find and we've had a rule, you know, since paying capital management has been around, never, ever invest in a local small general obligation, even if it's a larger city. Yeah, and that, that's very true, especially if you live in New York, New Jersey, and you want to be very state-specific with your bonds. It's not worth the added risk buying some of these uh, uh, municipalities or these local municipalities that, to your point, Bob, don't have a wide base of revenue. And I've seen a lot of horror stories. Like I met with a client a couple months ago, and he had a lot of Atlantic City bonds in his portfolio. Oh, boy. And those bonds have just gotten destroyed. So it's just... So important to understand what you own and at least know that somebody is doing the work to make sure that uh, you know everything you have is high quality because a lot of times it might not be. Um, yeah, well, hold on, Rob. We got sports betting now in Atlantic City, so maybe that'll bail those C-rated bonds out. <laughs> I've been in Atlantic <laughs> City. I have a feeling it's not going to help. But, uh, but you know what, Rob? You know what happens is uh, you know a broker will come to you with a higher yield, and and that's what happens. You'll reach for yield, thinking that a local general obligation uh, bond is safe. You know, it's not. You don't want to reach for yield. You don't want an investment where there's not certainty when it comes to the bond or fixed income investment. There's not certainty that you're going to get that money back. It's not just return on your money. It's return of your money. You want to make money. Where should you be? You'd be in the stock market because the returns over time are much better. Um, And, you know, in that vein, Bob, talking about lousy investments, this past week in New York, it was actually uh, blockchain week. And this is where everyone congregated to talk about cryptocurrencies. And there's just so much hype around cryptocurrencies. Reading lots of different articles right now. Um, You know, one article that I saw out there was talking about how this may be the year that institutional money comes in and buys Bitcoin. Well, you know, what's with the hype with such a lousy investment? I just don't get it, Bob. I know. After you had uh, Warren Buffett and his partner Charles Munger just basically telling you that this is a scam uh, or a fear of missing out trade. How could anybody want to attend a conference, let alone you know put their hard-earned money into something they don't understand? Yeah, what, what, what's crazy to me is you see very, very low participation in the stock market. In fact, if you look at how many people in the U.S. own stocks versus 10 years ago, it's down by like 10, 15%. And meanwhile, wow. you know, we talk about this a lot on the show, but fundamentals right now are some of the best we've ever seen historically. You have global growth around the world. You have companies more profitable than ever. We have low unemployment. I mean, it really doesn't get this much better. I say it's like we have this magical formula. But meanwhile, you have all this enthusiasm about an investment that's down 50% from its highs already this year. And it has a market capitalization that's as large as Apple and Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, put together. It's actually insane. So wait a minute. People people are putting money into an investment where, number one, you can't put it in your wallet. It doesn't pay a dividend. You can't eat it. And meanwhile, you've got major companies, the biggest companies in the world, are buying back their own stock. They're increasing their dividend. They're paying out you know, earnings to, 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 um, to investors side by side with the way they're investing their money. And people don't want to have stocks. They want to own something called Bitcoin. <laughs> it's a, you know, there's an old quote, Bob, when you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to stop and reflect. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's exactly what's happening right now, which is also another reason to be bullish on stocks because people just haven't embraced it. And that's usually a very good sign. It means that there's a lot of value there. Once everyone's on the trend, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. That's what you get in trouble. And I think that's a lot of what we've seen here with Bitcoin. So true, right? I think with the you know, with the stock market, let's face it, we're in a 10th year of a recovery. Um, you know, people think that it's like a baseball game, right? It's 
you know, it's got to be over after the ninth inning. Well, I've been to extra inning games, 14, 15 innings. You know, the market, the economy, it's not a baseball game, right? It's it's an engine. It's the greatest engine of wealth creation in the history of the planet. And the markets have been going up since 1776. That's a trend I'm going to continue to follow and to invest on. It's a wise decision, Bob, not to mention all that, all those dividends that pay out in that cash flow. And especially if you're getting close to retirement in retirement, that's one of the best places to look is a diversified portfolio right now to generate lots of current income. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a plan that's not based on hope like Bitcoin, here's your shot. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full, comprehensive, holistic review that's going to get you on ta- track for retirement. Simply bring in all your most recent statements. Just throw them in a folder. We'll go through everything for you. We'll look at everything from your tax return. Our CPA partner will review it. Make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. Only pay what you have to. Bring in last year's will. Bring in that will that you put together 10, 15 years ago. We'll have our estate planner review that to make sure that it's up to date, what changes you may want to make. And then finally, we'll go through every single investment you own. We'll load it into a personalized portal for you so you can see everything at a bird's eye view. And we're going to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's so many hidden fees in investment portfolios. We're going to break them all down and show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more consistent and reliable than the market going up each year for your retirement. We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio to make sure you're set for retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? Are you prepared for the next market crash? We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio, make it retirement ready. Then we're going to tie it all together and determine that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've been perfecting for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. It's time. Call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over $200,000 for your retirement. Our team will prepare for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pain family. We're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. This is no pain, no gain. Now back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. Bob and I like a common sense approach to planning and investing. We want to give you common sense ideas that you can use when it comes to your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest online video series, what you need to know about creating an income. You cannot outlive. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. It just gives you a nice baseline. Get the planning process started. Make it easy as possible. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. And yes, Bob's hair is real. Go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com and you can subscribe to the show. Uh, Also, most weeks you can catch me on CNBC, Fox Business News uh, for regular appearances. And if you ever have a burning question you want to ask myself for Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a great question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And to help us out with questions today, we have our producer, the man behind the scenes, Mark Haywood. What's shaking, Mark? How you doing today? Hey, hey. Good morning, guys. How we doing? No complaints. Well, you know, Mark, if I was doing any better, we'd all be Ryan. <laughs> ah. 
we'd be Bob is more apt. I was about to say if opinion. I if I was doing any better, I'd be down in Florida on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Bob's Such life. City time now, Mark. Come on, get your geography right. Will that's you? right. That's <laughs> right. Oh man. Uh, well, how about we dive into the mailbag, guys? I love it. All right. All right, got a couple good questions this week. Let's take one from Blake out in Westchester. Blake says, Bob, what's your opinion of investments that require you to keep your money locked up for a certain period of time? I know a lot of annuities operate that way, as well as some hedge funds. Oh, Blake, you asked about annuities. Here we go. (laughs) Well, Blake, it's not just insurance investments. It could be real estate. It could be limited partnerships where you can invest in basically anything. But anything you can invest in, where there's a wrapper that prohibits you from having liquidity, having to lock up your money. You can always do it with something that's liquid, probably less expensive and a better deal. So Bob's rule of thumb is never, I mean, never invest in something where there's not liquidity. Rye, yeah. what's your experience been with illiquid investments? Yeah, I think it, you know it's one of these things that we forget because the market's been so good and things have been going so well. But back in 2008, when we had that huge sell-off in the market, anything that was illiquid sold off even further. So it's not when the times are good. And it always goes back to our one of our favorite Warren Buffett quotes, when the tide goes out, you can, be, you can see who's been swimming naked. Um, you really want to make sure that you have liquidity or you're able to sell your funds for quick cash. If you can't do that, it can be a real big problem sometime down the line. You know, I mean, think about it. it. When it comes to any investment, just because you decided that day that that's the price that you're going to pay doesn't mean it's the right price. All right. Markets are, markets are auctions, right? It's what somebody's willing to buy it for and what somebody's willing to sell it for. So the other problem with illiquid investments is when you want to buy more, you can't necessarily take advantage of the dips. And when you have a tax loss, not every investment works out and let, you know, nothing's guaranteed hundred percent. If you want to take a tax loss, you can't. I mean, or if you have somebody who needs the money, you can't give it to them. So, you know, all things considered, Blake, we don't want anything that's illiquid and we never ever want to have an investment that comes with what's called a K one. Right. Have you ever had any K one nightmares? Oh, it's a disaster. If you've ever had any sort of real estate investment, a lot of times you do get a K one and they usually come late. Your account is going to charge extra fees to actually run the run the tax return on that K one. Um, so, but I would put this caveat out there because there's a lot. I see a lot of these real estate deals right now being sold. I don't think it's necessarily bad to have money in one of these things, but I think you just have to realize that's not in your liquid bucket. You got to make sure that you have ample cash. If God forbid you have an emergency, something happens, you have to know if you're putting money into an investment like this or one of these hedge funds. Um, that it's just not going to be readily available. You know, get the mindset, this could be five, 10-year money, not money that I may need next year. Well said. Oh, man, Blake, you got them on their uh, soapbox this morning here. But uh, (laughs) some good takes from Bob and Ryan, as always. Uh, Let's take another one. Let's move over now to Mary in Great Neck, Long Island. Mary writes in, Ryan, is it a bad idea to do a Roth conversion if I have a high income? Long story short is probably yes, Mary. I don't know your specific situation, um, but just to give us a little refresher on what a Roth conversion is, it's when you take money from your IRA or your retirement account and you pay taxes on that money now and put it into an account where you never pay taxes on it again, which can be a great strategy. But the problem is if you're a high earner right now and you pay taxes on that money, you're going to pay at a very high tax bracket. And it can take you many, many years to make back what you had to pay in taxes. Because remember, come April of the next year, you've got to cut Uncle Sam a check for any taxes that are owed. And that's money that comes out of your portfolio that's not growing anymore. And that's something, Bob, you really need to consider when you're looking at something like a Roth conversion. Yeah, I agree, Ry. I think a Roth conversion is a phenomenal tool. It could be like me where you know they work me like a dog here and you pay me like a puppy, Ry. So high income has <laughs> never, never been an issue. That's my. That's our uh, our business plan. <laughs> Work Bob like a dog, pay him like a puppy. <laughs> but yeah, I'll tell you what, that's been one of the greatest tools, uh, the Roth conversion. Either doing, and not just that, right? How about the backdoor Roth? Uh, something an idea you turned me on to a couple of years ago. I have a ton of money now sitting there, growing tax free forever. I love that forever. Yeah, that that's a good point. So if you are a high earner, the Roth conversion, Mary, might not be the best option for you, but you might be eligible to do a backdoor Roth. And not to get into too many specifics, but basically 
when you make over a certain amount of money, you can't contribute to a Roth IRA anymore. However, there's a loophole to do that, um, which you know you can talk to your accountant about, talk to your financial planner about. So there are ways to build tax-free money, even if you're in a high tax bracket, but it entails a couple proactive strategic moves on your part with your accountant and your financial advisor. You know, Ra, you know what the best way to know if you need a Roth conversion or not is to be financially organized. Now ask yourself, on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you? Now ask yourself another question. On a scale of one to 10, how organized financially would you like to be? Of course, we're all gonna answer a 10. And if you'd like to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers who have saved at least $200,000 for retirement. Think about it, having all your documents stored in one place, having a holistic view of not only what you own, but fully understanding why you own it, having all of your goals displayed and a report card on how you're progressing towards those goals. If you'd like to be a 10, all you have to do is call and Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now there's no obligation and there's no cost, but if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we'll do for you. We're gonna have our CPA partner review your tax return. Be certain that you're utilizing every tax benefit that's available to you, something like the Roth conversion. We're going to have your legal documents reviewed, your estate plan, your wills, your trust. To be certain that your estate plan is not an IOU to the Internal Revenue Service. And lastly, we want you to bring in all your investment statements. I don't care how organized they are. Keep them in the envelope. Throw them into a shopping bag. Pick up the phone. Make an appointment. Bring them in. We're going to analyze your portfolio. To be certain, you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Diversification, fees, and income. Diversification is all about having your assets spread across asset classes and also within asset classes. You don't want to overcharge yourself. Why pay more fees than necessary? You know, there's a lot of hidden costs buried deep in that prospectus, that mutual fund you own, or into that big, thick insurance contract sitting somewhere in your desk drawer. And income, we all need income. But most importantly, our biggest goal in life is to retire, but also to stay retired. There's a big income gap when you retire, and you want to be certain that we're able to fill that with a income stream that you can't outlive. We want to make sure that we have that income gap filled before we retire, and more importantly, to make sure that we can stay retired. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan. We're going to answer that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money, or is your money going to outlive you, utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting for over 40 years. We want to help take your family from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the highest odds of success and as much certainty as a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call us now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. We have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, call or text us at 844-752-6692. 6692. That's 844 752 6692. Make time for a second opinion. Make sure you are where you should be. Simply call or text us at 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, Many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts. And rest assured, the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Rye. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage. And not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word cash, that's C-A-S-H, cash, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word cash, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you are retirement ready in the simplest, most common sense way. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive 
You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. The word bullish to 555-888. It's a great way just to get started. Simple baseline to get the retirement planning process started, especially if you've been procrastinating. You can check it out for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And we now have a very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, one of our two certified financial planners, superstar seen on CNBC, Michelle McKinnon. I can't say enough. Thanks for being on the show this morning. I feel like I need a drum roll, Ryan. Jeez. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Well, that was a very, very humble... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonder, kidding, wonder, kidding, wonder, kidding. Wonder, Mr. Wonderful is to tuning in to hear you today, Michelle. He seems to really <laughs> like your commentary on CNBC. <laughs> Michelle seems to be on CNBC with Mr. Wonderful like every week, so we're, uh, we're all envious. You know, thanks for being on the show. This is our Spotlight segment where what we do every week, we dissect a real financial plan, and then we look at some of the flaws or mistakes uh, this you know, couple's been doing with their planning. So why don't you talk about a case you worked on recently and some of the things you did to help them out. Yeah, so a great couple up in New York, a little on the younger side, and, and talking about stalling and procrastinating, Ryan, they, they never ran a retirement plan. So uh, the husband just really didn't like working anymore, had been working for the past you know, 40 years, was tired, accumulated a nice net worth, but no one had ever run the numbers and no one have, has ever told them that they can retire sooner rather than later. Yeah, because that's one of those things. It's like you could work a couple more years, but wouldn't it be nice to know if you can get out now, why not do it? Right. It completely changes the game, right? If you know yeah. you don't have to work, you're just choosing to work or you choose to do something else. So that was the, the, the big, big accomplishment that we were able to give them is saying, hey, if you guys continue to contribute to XYZ for the next few years, you can retire. And number two, we provided that income through generating an additional $50,000 from their income Whoa. that immediately bridged the gap. They're retiring a little bit before Social Security. I mean, that's their living expenses right there, Ryan, and they don't even have to put in touch into principal. So let me get this right, Michelle, if I'm looking at this correctly. So without touching any principal, you're able to generate current income of almost 90 grand a year. It's crazy. That's awesome. What were they invested in that was generating such a little, re such a low return? Number one, very heavily weighted in equities, so minimal bond exposure. And number two, and kind of one of the reasons why um, that they came to us is they are loaded up in all these mutual funds, and they were for forced to pay a lot of capital gains on those mutual funds last year, and they were not prepared for it because they looked at their statement. And this has actually happened multiple times these past few months that people have come to me saying in 2017, they got hit with a big tax bill because obviously everyone did well in their mutual funds. Yes. and But no one sold, but just kidding, you still have to pay taxes because those mutual funds paid out a decent amount of capital gains last year because they all did so well. Big problem when you have, you know, you have you don't have any control over your tax situation. Uh, it's like if you have a an index fund or you have a, an ETF, you can control when those capital gain distributions occur. It's just crazy to leave that, give up that control to somebody you don't know. Let me sum it up real easy for you folks. Mutual funds are old school, exchange traded funds are new school. It's just from every, every aspect, it's just a much more efficient vehicle. And we talk about this a lot, but money saved in taxes is just as important and just as green, is just as green as money you can make invested. It's all about what you take home, not what you make. Well, if you're not paying taxes to the IRS, that money's in your account compounding to your benefit, to your children's benefit. I mean, why give it to the government? And I've also seen that people are hesitant to take capital gains because oftentimes on these mutual funds, you will have to pay capital gains to sell them. <laughs> However, guess what? You're still going to have to pay capital gains over the next few years, even if you don't sell. So it's yeah. like better to rip the bandaid off now and then be in control of taking your own capital gains. Yeah. Exactly. How come they had so much money in cash? Well, you know, it, I see this all the time, Bob. You know, they were thinking about potentially buying a home, not sure, and just a little bit of fear. They didn't know what to do with their cash. They mm -hmm. had been working for so many years and just stockpiling, 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 and they were really fearful of, you know, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to invest in. You know, there's this fear that markets are at all-time highs. I don't want to put it in the market. I'm worried that the bond markets are dipping because of interest rates rising. So it was a little bit out of fear. That's crazy, but I mean, it's so common. I totally get it because 2008 was just so dramatic. But I mean, when you're earning 1% at best on your money market fund, I mean, you're losing so much. And then you look at here, 
with your diversified portfolio where you're not saying, hey, we're not going to put all your money in the market. We're not going gonna to diversify over different income streams. That's 90 grand a year and has nothing to do with if the market goes up or down. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Well, that's what I love about your analysis here, Michelle. It, everything's in writing. They can see you know, what their net worth and their income stream is going to look like one year after another. You know, without this type of analysis, it's just some salesperson's, you know, lips against your fear, right? It's like 3,000 words, uh, you, know, you know, shadowed at a person or said to a person, that doesn't allay your fears. When you're able to see your own personal financial situation in writing and it shows you where you're going to be every year for the next 30 or 40 years, it's got to have a lot of comfort. And that they can retire way sooner than they ever expected. And yeah, stay retired, exactly. even better. Yeah. It's just so therapeutic to have a plan and just understand, you know, what your income gap's going to be, how you can fill it. And there's a lot of easy fixes where if you just get diversified properly, you know, you're set. But by not doing those things, I mean, in this case, there's so much they're missing out on. Like to miss out on another $50,000 a year in income has a tremendous impact negatively by not doing anything. And that's what we see all the time. Well, you know what the beauty is, Michelle? You, the, the, you have to take time to sit down with you to get the plan done. But once it's finished, they now have that 360 financial portal. They can drop in any time they want. Nine o'clock at night, four o'clock in the morning, six, you know, 12 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon when they're ready, when they feel like checking to see how they're doing. And everything's going to be right there in real time. Absolutely. Well, great job on this case. Another, as Bob would like to say, financial masterpiece. Thanks for being on the show, Michelle. My pleasure. Um, if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a review like this. I need to know what my income gap is. I need to know how to fill it. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and our certified financial planner, Michelle McKinnon, will put together at no cost our total financial master plan, which is a full review just like this. If you bring in all those statements, just throw them into a folder, We'll go through everything, build your personal portal, and we'll run the same analysis. Can you increase your income by double? This couple is gonna have $90,000 a year coming in. They're gonna fill that income gap. Do you have the proper diversification? Are you sitting with too much cash? Do you have too much risk in your portfolio? What does your diversification look like? We're gonna show you where those pitfalls are in your portfolio. Make sure you're retirement ready and you're protected against the next downturn. And then finally, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it all together we're gonna determine that age old question. Are you gonna outlive your money or more importantly, is your money gonna outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We have a few slots left. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your personal retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show this morning. It's always a financial party when Michelle McKinnon comes on the show. Always, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks for being on, Michelle. Any big plans for the rest of the weekend? Um, I'm actually going down to Florida uh, to hang with some friends and hopefully soak up some sun. Nice. Always on the move, Michelle McKinnon. Always, always on, on the move. move. Big Bob, another great show this morning. Excellent job, Rye, and uh, can't wait till next week. All right, well, have a great weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.